I wasn't one of those founders who scanned the GDP for opportunity. And I was like, कि कुछ करना है अब देखते हैं कि क्या करना है. I remember Christ College के बाहर दो लड़के, 19 year old engineering boys. And I'm talking about customer behavior changing in the last five years. Four step skincare routine for both of them. Yeah, and as is like you know the day you realize that engineering boys have four step skincare routines. <laughs> India has changed randomly on the street. She just randomly asked people, "Can I cut your hair?" <laughs> I think it's the first. We had like paper cutouts, and you were like, "You shelf me, dekho." So we would go to like you know Apollo Pharmacy and be like, "Can we please put this paper cutout here?" What is the decade plan? Like, how do you guys think about like 2040 for Moxie? We're building a younger, edgier, cooler, cleaner L'Oreal. Hi everyone, welcome to a brand new episode of the Barber Shop. Today I'm joined by two very special founders. Uh, we had done one episode with the Anvation founders, which did really well. Personally, it really piqued my curiosity because I am able to see how founders of today, maybe in the last people who started their company in the last one or two years, they think very differently, far more sophisticated, far more nuanced than, for example, someone like me when I started Bombay Shaving Company back in 2016, where I feel like a little bit of a dinosaur, but it gives me the opportunity to learn and also to bring to the barber shop viewers how today's founders. Are thinking about building their businesses. Today we have with us Nikita and Anmol. Nikita and Anmol are founders of Moxie. I am personally very close to them because Nikita and I shared an employer before this. But more than that, they incubated their company inside the Bombay Shaving Company offices for a year. We were very very privileged to host them and learn from them and see them bring their baby, their product, their brand, everything to life in 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 our very office. Uh, so Nikita and Anmol. Welcome to the barber shop, and thank you so much for giving us the time. Oh, thank, thank you, you so for much. having us back. When you're saying that, it's bringing back a lot of memories. You know, the paper cutouts of the <laughs> the first iteration of the packaging. You know, and you were like holding it six feet away. Ki iska shelf through kya hai? <laughs> so really, it's. <laughs> And I, before even the team, I actually sat here for even longer than a year, right? There were many months when I was alone. One year I was alone. There was no team, yeah. and I used to come here a lot. So yeah. this is very much, you know, home for us. Uh, so thank you for having us. Oh, well, we're very very happy to have you. But. Six months from launch, two and a half years. Like Anmol was reminding me that the six months of growth, not the five years of growth. Yeah. Uh, but I remember you guys discussing the category. Hair is a personally a not very <laughs> favorite category of mine. But you guys had gone deep in research. But talk about uh, what was the spark of the idea? Because we'll come to your six months growth and like just just taken off like a you know like like a rocket. But we'll come to that specifically. But let's take a step back to how do you guys think about the idea for Moxie, the consumer obsession that clearly you both have. We'll talk through that a little bit. Yeah, sure. So I, it, it started I think with me and my personal journey with my hair, which never used to look like this. And growing up, especially when you grow up in Delhi, everyone is very trigger happy with straighteners. So it was always frizzy. The words that the beauty industry teaches you are rukhe, sukhe, unmanageable, unruly. So that is what I would use to describe it. And Pretty much from my early teens, I was always straightening it, and then was it like a school thing? Are you an APS? Yes, it, it starts very early, you know. Like it's like offhand comments. Like when I was in the sixth grade, I was to receive some prize in the assembly, you know, a big big day for an eleven year old, and the headmistress was like, "Oh, just do something about your hair for tomorrow." So and I didn't even feel bad. I think like the the worst part is by eleven, I already knew that any time I have to be taken seriously, I'm gonna have to like Straighten your hair. yes. So I told my mom, you have to, you know, wake up early. Six o'clock, which one parlor opens, open, right? And help me straighten it at home. Eleven years old, right? And, it, but and it, was it like, was it in the same basket as uncut nails and unironed uniforms, like having un unkempt hair? Was I it like not as a discipline much. issue, or was it like a cosmetic issue? Yeah, I, I don't think it's a discipline thing. It's definitely a cosmetic thing. On the daily basis, pay. It's just a case of your hair should be tied and all of that. But prize wale din, jab photo khichegi meri tumhare saath, then your hair better be blowed, right? Is an absurd thing to say to an eleven year old, right? It's terrible, but. That is what we are fed, right? Growing up, you see that you know celebrity with the extremely fake photoshopped hair, and you think that ये होना चाहिए. After the shower, I should come out looking like this, and if I don't, then मुझ में कोई कमी होगी, right? मेरे बाल बुरे हैं. I don't have good hair. I hear that a lot still from young girls, and it, now it infuriates me, right? I'm filled with rage. Like, no, your hair is good. You are using the wrong products, and you're being taught something, right? So that when you sit in a chair in a salon, someone can be like, अरे बाल खराब हो रहे हैं. आप treatment करा लो. Right? It's it is. It is pretty toxic, right? It's the fairness cream equivalent for hair. I think I've, I've said this before to you also. So, I think over my journey of figuring out how to take care of my hair, it it literally took over my life. Like I would have been a partner at McKinsey last year had I stayed, yeah. and I loved what I did. Everything was going well, but laga ki bhai isko solve karna padega. So it was very 
purpose led i think i wasn't one of those founders who scanned the gdp for opportunities <laughs> uh, yeah. and it was Market like size. yeah yeah ki kuch karna hai ab dekhte hain ki kya karna hai it was very much a problem i wanted to solve and you know, the thesis went beyond curly hair right and mm, yeah. um i think overall what we're trying to do is we are building very high performing products for indian hair types rather than habits and the, so there are two parts to this one is what do we mean when we say high performing i love it intentionally formulated for real glorious indian hair yeah. yes yes and why why is that important a because um by high performance i mean like salon quality products we give you the 2000 rupee experience at the 600 rupee price point which was the lowest i could go i was like <laughs> because like that is the benchmark right i'm not comparing with brands in my um, price band when we do our consumer trials it is is it better than the luxury product or as good as the luxury product that is the bar and we keep going that's why we take 18 months to complete r and d on a product he that has to be the standard right and when we say for indian hair types whether in habits that's because indian hair is genetically different right and um, as you know yeah. there is very deep copy paste culture in india when you look at large brands they copy paste what they do in the west yeah. and when you look at young brands also r and d culture right actually having a team of scientists with yeah. phd's is very there it's more or less marketing innovation yeah. because it's grueling it grew yeah. in 18 months i was like for all practical purposes you know unemployed yeah. um so, so also, to do that is 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 hard yeah also i think uh, what we did was uh, when we started researching how deep is the problem is it only her feeling that this is a large problem or because uh, you know a lot of people feel like how do i validate this thesis so we went and, and you feel the problem it feels like a 100x bigger yeah. yeah yeah but you don't want to be in that echo chamber of the chamber of the three girls with frizzy hair right so yeah that was one that's one of the most basic mistakes a founder can make ki you know make a problem larger than it is in your own head so what we did was we went to spoke to people at HUL we took out our batchmates from uh, MBA from all places uh, FMCG companies and what we realized was the fact that we got certain figures uh 90% of indians which is essentially brown skin people have wavy to curly hair and i realized this uh, because 90% 90%, 90%. and see the thing is uh, men as 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 a guy you don't really think about these things uh, too much but like hair types are divided between 1a to 4c so there are a range of hair types which have uh, their own problems so how uh, do you think about the name the brand and the product like what what you put in the consumer's hand how did you guys craft that over the last two and a half years so i think maybe we should start with product because that's the oldest journey yeah. where yeah. it should start product yeah yeah we'll start yeah. so that is uh, that's the kind of the full two years uh, you know on day one i went about trying to figure out like i you know very passionate about now of quick mckinsey and i'm like you know i want to do this full time and acha product banana hai but i had no idea where to start um so the first thing i think that i needed to get super clear on and i'd get a lot of advice from folks it should be you know mostly the game will be about getting the price right getting the distribution right product is never that important you know you should just start asking for samples from third party manufacturers and some instinct in me was saying that this doesn't seem like it's going to solve what i'm trying to do because i'm i'm very specifically trying to make better products for indian hair for indian weather which don't exist right we are using global products usko dilute karke kisi tarah bottle mein spray bottle mein dal ke like it's we do all kinds of jugaad it's all jugaad yeah. yeah but something that truly works for us is like this doesn't seem right so what matlab we can these skill set of give it a research and find the expert uh started meeting scientists i was like if you don't have doctor at the beginning of your name i don't think that you're going to be able to do what i need right and you're not going to have the intent to create ip of our own um so the first thing that we needed to sort was that so we got an excellent team they happen to be all women that is not by design but it's it's very helpful it's a very good it's, it's a good good to go bar yeah. yeah so we first we started doing that so there's an entire stage getting process the other thing is if you want to if your moat is going to be a high performing product if you want to like i said give that salon quality experience at one third the price point you need to do you you only outsource the science unko chemistry aati hai unko baki sab nahi aata consumer research who should be in the trial cohorts right what instructions do you give them how do you ensure that like what you were saying earlier that the articulation of what the product should do is correct um and is in terms of the problem that they want to solve how do you help them adjust how to use it it's very complex in fact i needed to do, recruit people from all over the country so literally i would walk out to people in malls and stuff and you know and that is another thing that proves that it's a deep problem because when i would say i'm doing this will you participate in our trial yeah. every single person said yes 
the good part in your business also is that you can identify oh visually yeah you. i would see them and be like this i need colored hair or a certain texture i should ask this person if they're willing to you know participate and i would get them excited but you can only ask us like they know how to make a stable emulsion but in the beginning we'll do a brief i was also even as an enthusiast pretty deep on it as deep as i could be without being a chemist yeah. um so now we have you know my one of our eirs rupika who does all of this uh but you can't outsource that they will not give you the product validated tested with people wo sari mehnat khud kar di hoti hai unko you only outsource the chemistry right and this is something that even i talk to other entrepreneurs who want to do something in personal care and i'm like you there is no shortcut <laughs> you have to give so a lot on this and make your own trial panel and things like that so you need to make sure that all of that is right you're getting your instructions down to a t in terms of how to use तो उस पर बहुत मेहनत है आई थिंक दैट इज वेयर वेन अनमोल सिंग इज नॉट अ सिक्स मंथ जर्नी इट्स अ टू ईयर सिक्स मंथ जर्नी वन ऑफ द हार्डेस्ट थिंग्स टू डू एंड विद हार्डली एनी एडवाइस फ्रॉम पीपल ऑन हाउ टू डू इट बिकॉज आई डोंट थिंक एनी वन सेसिंग दिस वे नॉट इन हेयर आई डेंट मीट एनी बडी वो इवन एनकरेज मी टू डू इट लाइक दिस डूइंग दिस इनिशियल रिसर्च ऑफ जस्ट गेटिंग the country that we're selling to is so wide and broad in terms of customer segments what their needs are etc et and we've not traveled right so what we uh, initially did and i really liked doing this project and this experiment was we put our two core team members santosh and rupika we put them in a train and we took train from city to city so we went to hyderabad we went to chennai then we went to coimbatore then we went to bangalore we did thrissur we did kochi mm-hmm. we went to malls we went to ikea we went to uh, colleges we stood outside college campuses and we just asked people what they do and what do they look like and what do they use what do they spend money on and just get uh, information from the ground it was a mind blowing experience because of the fact that the i think i remember christ college ke bahar दो लड़के 19 ईयर ओल्ड इंजीनियरिंग बॉयज राइट एंड आई एम टॉकउट कस्टमर बिहेवियर चेंजिंग इन द लास्ट फाइव इयर्स राइट फोर स्टेप स्किन केयर रूटीन फॉर बोथ ऑफ दैम राइट एंड एज इज लाइक यू नो द डे यू रियलाइज दैट इंजीनियरिंग बॉयज हैव फोर स्टेप स्किन केयर रूटीन इंडिया हैज चेंज एंड इट्स मूव्ड so that was mind blowing we spoke to so many uh, young girls uh, who talked about what they use what they want out of their hair and what do i also realize was the fact that hair is not hair care it's hair styling as well and hair styling has taken a front seat in today's generation because it's get ready with me videos yeah. right and get ready with them but pura look hai and you were even open to work to college that didn't used to be there culturally right yeah. now you are able to do that so that's why aesthetic is also very important and i remember this because we, you guys had raised capital uh and you guys it is 2021 20, 22 right when there like a lot of companies it was this was when funding booms happen in the series b series c series d stage a lot of that capital kind of flows down into seed or angel funding very very quickly right so that was the 22 phase and i remember uh, uh i remember and since you are a very like you are a very well known person in our circles there were discussions around why aren't they launching it why aren't they launching it it's taking time and i was like i always used to think that you know customer obsession just takes time and this trip which you are very casually talking about right now would have been a long one would have taken a yep. lot of time and you guys yeah. would have sitting in trains and we are not used to at mckinsey or at atm or we are not we are used to like very fast turn around and very yeah. quick yeah pehre iske product out like we start thinking outcome back but customer obsession customer first products getting the nuance of a product right just takes a lot of time yeah, yeah. and anmol is very very particular about this he's like if us as the core team i had not been to any of these cities except bangalore he's like if you have not been if you only understand one part of the country and especially like this hair texture problem it's more humid there genetically also the hair is more quote unquote unmanageable right wavy or curly or if you have not met and physically seen and spoken to 50 of them then tum kaise banaoge matlab like it's it's so fundamental and when you put it that way you like you know what you're right we should jump on a train and just do this yeah. but very and you know i'm very grateful that this is the office that i sat in to incubate this because even i would sometimes think is it worth taking so long because should i be prioritizing speed when it comes to all of this but 
not once did you tell me to hurry you would keep telling me take your time get it right yeah. it's okay you know there's your there's no train to catch no pan an interview uh take your time and get it right because um, i mean i think i could i could feel like even friends family everyone was like to do saal se bole ja rahi hai um are you still working on that thing i feel like yes very much so you know like 16 hours a day um so why isn't it out yet but we took the decision to um really over invest in everything and get it really really right and not rush into it uh, and i'm glad we did that and that is why it's been like hyper scale in 6 months right that is the fruit of those two years of just being but you would not like you would not be assured of hyper scaling when you launch not at all putting in that effort and that would have been a huge risk. difficult one also i think frankly uh investors coming from an ira standpoint if you give me ira in 8 years versus 5 years yeah then the same return then i would much rather take 5 years right and that's where there is misalignment of for, for only for a, our timing standpoint there is capital allocation misalignment took business on institution building in your case yeah. so to do that i think takes courage and that's a learning that i think one is the obvious uh, learning from nikita and anmol is to just be everyone talks about this by the way or being consumer obsessed but many people just say without actually doing it i think in this case where i have like had a front row seat to them taking all these train journeys like obsessing over touching people's hair etc i think whatever product you are building being consumer back in the most authentic way is a huge learning from you you have to do your lab tests you have to do your dermat tests all of that you have to do but that's not enough yeah that is extremely technical and and theoretical yeah and that tells you that the product is good on paper but eventually the moment of truth is jab log baal mein lagayenge to unko kaisa lagega right no wonder yeah exactly <laughs> when it's dry what so what were the fruit of labor what are the products that you guys finally came out with you came out with the red jewel right like you yes uh, so we've got our our initial range is yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> Our first range, our starting point is the frizzy, wavy, dry, curly hair uh, <laughs> um, category. Uh, so we have a regimen. It's a four-step regimen. There are five products. So, by the way, guys, I think when it comes to beauty, and when it comes to, you know, when it comes to making someone feel good-looking, just the product being good-looking is so important. And you guys have done a phenomenal job with this. Like truly. So we are very good. I just I oh, thank, thank you. I agree. And then we'll come to that. I think we were going to talk about like brand and and uh, you know moving beyond product. But in terms of product, so we have a shampoo conditioner. Uh, the, that's step one and two, which is your usual shampoo conditioner in the shower. Then immediately after that, step three is either a leave-in conditioner or a curl cream. Okay. Uh, this is like a moisturizer for your hair. Yeah. So fundamentally, our hair, the reason it is frizzy, wavy, is because it's it's dry. The natural oils are not able to travel down the hair shaft because the cuticle is uneven. Yeah. Uh, the top layer of the hair is uneven. So Leave-in conditioner, curl cream is either or. The leave-in conditioner is a very light moisturizer. Oh. If your hair is slightly dry, frizzy, or in a loose wave, the curl cream is a very heavy, dense. It has three butters in it. It's a heavy moisturizer for hair that's very, very coarse or very, very frizzy. Um, but even for like an MVP, it was I think early on in our trials only it was very clear that we need two levels of moisturization. The last one is a gel-based serum. Mm. Gel-based serums are far superior to your typical silicone-based serum because that doesn't do much. Correct. Um, that's very cosmetic. It's in some ways like an oil replacement huh. um but this is a product that's very unique there huh. are also a lot of gels uh, that are there in india already a lot of um brands do like curly hair gels but those are kind of heavy sticky um they leave a tactile feel sometimes the next day you feel like there's something in your hair and people hate that in huh. india we do not want Correct. anything that weighs our hair down even a little bit so this is a very unique product yeah. it is water based uh there's nothing like it i think even globally maybe it's it's one of the first of its kind it's very spreadable yeah. so it feels like a serum yeah. so it gives you that serum experience all the good things and so really about a serum being lightweight being easy to use even a pea sized amount on your whole hair uh it was very tough for us to crack this um but it still does so i have a a bunch of it in my hair right now i always do so it helps to keep it from getting like frizzy and messy and tangly uh so this is like a magic product um little polarizing uh <laughs> But the other thing with this product, right? I think this I learned from a shopkeeper, by the way. Any of these products, right? A gel or a balm is like I remember going to a shopkeeper. He like he really took it out and put it on his hand and held his hand like this to see how far it slips mm-hmm. in how much time. And the most stable it was, the happier he got. And they were like, "Cool, this seems to be something." Yeah, it was the quality of yeah. good makeup. So it's probably happened by now. A, a, a poor quality gel would have kind of separated and would have seemed like a liquid marker on the product. Kind of. Yeah. yeah amazing so again guys i think i remember i do again so many memories come back right when i see this i remember us discussing key 
ये आपको लाइक आई डोंट नो वेदर द कैमरा स्टैंड कैप्चर इट दिस इज अ क्लासिक सिंगलेस ट्यूब ओके नाउ मेनी कंपनीज इन द वर्ल्ड मेक दिस इंडिया इज अ मैसे मैन्युफैक्चरिंग ऑफ दिस बट द ट्रिक इज डू यू वांट टू राइट माय हैड्स अ लिटिल सीरम ही राइट नाउ बट डू यू वांट टू राइट योर एंटायर um communication on the tube or do you want to write on a label that comes on the tube and if you write on a label it's a lot more flexible you're a lot more supply chain conscious but what end up happening is sometimes the label and the tube look different so getting the colors right now the colors will look one way on the laptop screen but look very different when you produce yeah. it but you guys have done such a stellar job and i always used to think that garnier was like a gold standard or like a black standard on this right because mm. you could never make out even labeled tube yeah but you guys have done amazing like just the contrast between the pantone on the tube and the and the, and the label is just so seamless it's beautiful we this way we bahut mehnat lagi you know on all of the packaging and quality in the middle of the night ye color nahi aa raha hai i think cream pe bhi problem aa gaya tha na yeah 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 every every possible problem you know that's that's the the first time that you're doing everything you we were naive to think ki first prototype sab cheez ka sahi aayega even that bloody bottle i think that's like shaved years off of my life getting it right um but i think we we're, we're happy that we put in all of that effort because what's finally come out like you were saying we want people to feel um like that that feeling of a good hair day that's what moxi means you know coming out to the brand yes. the word moxi means character and like x factor you know so you've got moxi and that is the feeling of a good hair day so we wanted to be able to capture that also visually that um the brand champions like we we there is that serious message of the intentionally formulated for real glorious indian hair but it, we champion the feeling of a good hair day i'm sick of seeing that really fake over photoshopped over processed image of hair and Straight. all yeah. all hair oil that had some like this yeah. women in long black hair like doing this and that and yeah yeah hair. wo aise karegi or <laughs> and then she'll become the most popular girl in college <laughs> and, you know sari shaadi ke rishte aa jayenge like it's so silly yeah. um and if, if, honestly even the girls with straight hair i feel like their hair is not bouncy enough nobody is happy <laughs> right because it's it's, it's too realistic yeah. so no no one is happy so i was like ye nahi karenge so no photoshop all the images that we use zero i even when we did our photo shoot i remember the photographer was like later if there are any flyaways you know then you will tell me i was like no no kiti i won't tell you i i want them there i do not don't dare retouch yeah. a single piece of hair i don't want to perpetuate this anymore that's the point of the brand right so rather than going with a more th- those science is so cold to us right i've been talking about it um oh, ad, yeah. ad nauseum like i'm going on and on um though it's so core i felt the brand is more we want to talk about the beauty aspect of hair right and not maybe position it as uh, talk about the science but in the name in the palette you know keep it youthful um and celebrate the the feeling of a good headie and just real hair real hair is so gorgeous right why are we not showing it uh, it's 2024 it's really time um so that and is how we were thinking about our visual about, identity yeah, but talk about color okay i remember distinctly discussing this with you that this color on a shelf might be tricky it might look dirtier because mel bad jayega etc do you guys were like you know like me yahi karna hai this just is us but talk about like the choice of this yeah. neon what do you call it there was the color yeah, the pattern called yeah it's 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 neon it's i mean it's short rules i think the <laughs> color of tennis ball but it's it's neon uh um, the tennis ball yeah. so it's we when we when you know when we promoted roland gar yeah ras or wimbledon <laughs> uh, oh yeah wimbledon <laughs> banner would look nice yeah. Yeah. i think it's a great idea yeah. that is a great idea yeah sorry go ahead yeah. um so we went with this because so there is the choice of color is also actually very scientific mujhe nahi pata tha ye sab i was like you pick something that's like nice and you know memorable um but semiotics the term semiotics and you know i when we speak to folks who've been in branding for a long time they'd be like this choice is very um, there is a lot of science that goes behind it so we wanted to pick something that represents being authentic and real which is a very gen z thing yeah. so when you think of millennials you think of millennial pink dusty rose it's a very um pastel sort of palette which is how most beauty brands have been even so far right even in india the first generation of digitally native ones yeah. um and that represents a far more manicured um representation of yeah. of your your life and your identity yeah. uh, but gen z is not like that right billy eilish is a, a gen z icon not Oh, hair is color. Yeah, yeah. Or like it's even greener, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, it's her. It's not. I don't know. Ariana Grande, maybe yeah. like or or whoever. It was yeah. kind of that more traditional beauty archetype. So you're talking about being being real, right? So we didn't want to go with something that is a traditional beauty category code. It was a risk. It's a departure. But the semiotics of this color is that it's and that is what we're celebrating, right? Just 
being who you are, figuring out what works for you. And if that is the Billy Eilish hairstyle, then that's wonderful, right? That is, there's no one way to be beautiful and Indian. That, what you're talking about, that very typical hair oil ad, yeah. that's not the only way to have beautiful hair. Um, so with that in mind, I think we wanted to be very clear that we want to break the category code. And then the other things around shelf throw, make sure that it's bright, ownable, yeah. memorable, right? That's, of course, table stakes. And then we combined it with the steel, which is a more familiar, subtle color, uh, right? We didn't want it to be too much. So even the choice of how to use them, how to balance them, right? Your more familiar use cases, which are more about hair health, your shampoo and conditioner is primarily teal. And then your styling use case. These two products are, it's the opposite ratio, right? In terms of how much it is about hair health uh, and how much it is about aesthetic and styling. So that's where then you infuse more of the neon. So isme, matlab, it blew my mind also to know how much science goes into visual identity and color palette. It is. Yeah, but that the is... Whole three, six, nine, right? the six, six foot shelf throw thing. Yeah. Because yeah. if you look at a shelf in India, people are walking, you have to grab the glance on either side while they're walking through an aisle that is not designed for movement in either direction. Right? Yeah. In the shelf itself, you will be competing with all of the brands that you spoke mm-hmm. about. From yeah. HUL to Everyone, right? You used to tell us this. We when before we had the actual prototypes, yeah. we had like paper cutouts, and you were like, "Shelf me dekho." So we would go to like you know a polo pharmacy and be like, "Can we please put this paper cutout here?" And <laughs> yeah, I have, I have images of that where we've gone ahead and behind the uh, bottles that are on the shelf, from the outside we've put it there, and then we've taken a full photo of that to see ki kya nikal kya hai. Or agar aise dus lagenge to uska shelf kro kya aega? Will the eye go there? You know, even if it's at a lower shelf level. So all of that guidance, I think. We used that the the Bombay Shaving Company ecosystem well, right? To yeah. ask all of these questions, to do all of these tests. Otherwise, again, you get stuck in your own echo chamber of what's in there. But that's such, that that is so true. This whole this whole thing around good-looking marketing versus effective marketing. And I like I, I was talking to Arindam, the At- Atomberg founding member guy. He was saying, look, every marketing team wants to create viral content today. But do you remember viral content? What are the biggest viral campaign from 2022? We don't remember it. Because we enjoy the content, we don't know what it stands for, for the most part. And that's what I think is super critical when it comes to like, just marketing in general is like, just the consistency of messaging, you know, just getting the basics right. Yeah. Uh, uh, he can give the example of Kent. He's like, in a water purifier, if you want to say subsession, like one of the purest water, mm. Kent. They've been saying that one thing for the last yeah. 30 years, right? Yeah. And that's what people miss. So it's amazing to see that you got in the shelf throw and the communication kind of really spot on, mm-hmm. like up front. Yeah. yeah. And I think, uh, and we also in the early days when we had this discussion, when we were going in with this, uh, when we were trying to figure out what's the brand name, what's the packaging, what's the design that looks like. One, uh, I think... What we also, along with the product being global, what we also realized the fact that this has to be a globally competing product on a brand level. Uh, this, uh, and the thought came from the fact that, see, the thing is, in India, up until now, uh, mid-90s, 80s, uh, nobody was building brands. Like, how many global brands have we currently built, right? Not even and, yeah. yeah, and now is the time when, you know, in hair, especially uh, in, in our circles, what we would do is that, hey, my NRI cousin is going there, or he's going there, please take that shampoo for me, take that shampoo for me. I was like, you know, it's 2024, and it's high time we stop doing that, because one part of it is the fact that there's a brand pull, and part of it is the fact that those products may be better from a quality perspective. We can solve both of them today in this country, and it's, important we do that uh, see the thing is it's hair is not just about or uh, the brand that you use is not just about what it looks like uh, you know it's about how you feel and i i call it the you know the day i think virat kohli stood up against australia and you know we're indian we have competency we have the skill and we will give it back to you uh, so, you know what, somebody in India needs to stand up and brands have to stand up and say, okay, you know what, like we have the capability, we have the brain, we have the packaging, we have design, we have the, all the skills available to compete globally. So, our brand Bala does it so well. Yes. Bado. Too good. Right, what I will see the packaging is taken tea from India, it is, but it is not lost as Indianness. Yeah. It's not an Indian brand that's trying to be 
Western. Yeah. It's a very Indian brand that is absolutely celebrating its Indianness. Yeah. But they are building a such yeah, a. It's not chai latte, like you know. It's, it's, yeah. It's, it is. And also, it isn't pretending. And yeah. selling to Indians in the US. Yeah. yeah. He's selling to Americans in the US, or he's selling to you know local people in in the world. Otherwise. We have a lot of brands that celebrate Indianness but remain very Indian. Patanjali, for example, is a fantastic brand. Yeah. But I'm, I'm very sure that the large percentage of its buyers outside India are Indian people. Yeah, those global sensibilities are like you need to be a little bit uh, more multicultural. I think Vadam is, is beautiful that way yeah. in that the roots are very, very Indian, yeah. right? It isn't um, something masquerading as Indian or like, um, I, I can't think of a better choice of words, but using Indian stereotypes. Yeah. It's uh, it's a great brand, and if you've seen the tea room in Khan Market now, oh my God, it's beautiful. beautiful. Yeah, what an experience! And uh, we see this with multiple other brands as well, right? Like I think for uh, the way I look at it, from what Mokobara has done from a brand perspective, right? Uh, again, very aspirational but very Indian. You know, uh, I think that's something we've got customers now saying that I'm going to uh, so she's ordered four routines uh, and stocked up on it and taken us. Today, right? today morning also someone bought four sets of the shampoo and conditioner because she's going back abroad. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Can you imagine someone That's stocking so up on an Indian product, someone who lives in the US otherwise, can you chance that it's naked? She has inside. everything available, but she's choosing this. Yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely. But let's come to business, I think. Yes. Amazing, I, I think for the viewers. I think we spent some time on this, but it's important to understand that today's content, and this is, by the way, actually very top of the line thinking, right? In terms of consumer obsession, insights, what is the real need, what is competition doing, how can we be better? For that, we need a team of doctors or people who have done research in the space. Let us create this product. This is how the product needs to actually look like. By the way, it needs to be beautifully wrapped in a brand that has got sensibility. It's very easy. Look at the number of decisions they made. It's, it would have been very easy to have made this a science first brand like Cetaphil or one of these ones. They could do that. They could have taken that route, which actually might be an equally good route in air. But they wanted to make it about beauty. They wanted to make it about aesthetic, sensorial feeling. So the whole moxie world has come together with product, brand, communication, pricing. Yeah. But now you took that to market in yeah. November, December? Uh, November. And okay. uh, but, but before, uh, experts on that front also, by the way, we invested in everything. We were like, we didn't come, so let's not even try, right? So people who are excellent at brand strategy, thinking through brand idea, visual design, all of the raw material was there inside us. But to be able to really shape it and bring it here, yeah. um, so, we, we really did invest. Uh, the decision making, and just to add on to the decision making, right? I think when we started, before we had any of our fundraise, Taking our savings, and Nikita made this call uh, before I joined her. We had taken, uh, we worked with an agency called Police C, uh, based out of Bombay. And it was the most fantastic decision, but it was a very expensive decision to be taken out of your own savings also, right? But As an individual, like large companies, you know, they're working with Nika. The Nika meeting is going on in the next room, and I was like, right? And I was like, but I... I think it's important. But the confidence to take yeah. that call was is quite significant because it pays off in the longer term. And the fundamental is very right. It's very so, hard to change these things later, right? The name is the name. So I was like, I, I don't want to name it alone, right? I, I want experts to help me. Do you know one interesting thing about Bombay Showing Company? Rohit is not there right now, but even the initial design of the razor, the uh, design of the brand, the um, uh, including the first um, research... Fees, you have to pay like a small fee for the for a manufacturer or for a lab to kind of take a product up. All of that I had done through my savings. So when I put up the shaving cream, my MOQ is my well, that's a shaving cream product, take a difficult product. Other than 5,000, this will be around 15,000 tubes. Oh my god, 15,000 tubes at that time, our price used to be wild. 39 rupees or 40 rupees a tube. You go, let's see now. 12 lakh rupees, can you order them? I didn't buy that time. I had run to, I had allocated all my savings around 60 lakh rupees to this and it was gone. Let me raised four crores. I did not want to pay myself back from that four crores because I didn't want, want that four crores to become 3.4 on day one. Yeah. So then I started taking small, small amounts from that to pay off the loan. The balance chain looked really wonky for a while. But you're right, it feels really expensive at that time. Yeah. It feels really expensive. And again, that's something for Founders who we are, we are celebrating bootstrapping a lot. Bootstrapping is really, really hard. 
it is really hard because you need to start thinking ROI first. And sometimes if the return is not on time, then then you start taking very conservative calls. And then you yeah. start taking very short term calls. Then balance is going. But come let's come to business. Yeah, yes. Anmol, you want to take this? So we mid mid November we launched first ten days was mostly friends family. So December was the first real month of business. Um so May would have been month six. So like six months and whatever, ten odd days. Uh since is how old we are business size and Anmol, you wanna maybe Uh we decided to do D to C first because of the fact that um I think we wanted to know the customer a lot better, uh, test out the hypothesis. You can uh, understand, get the customer information, um, speak to them, call them up, ask them what's working, what's not working, and uh, everything else. Has it panned out? Yes, that's panned out really well. Uh, and I think, um, so we did uh, D2C Live, but in D2C also we wanted to make sure of the fact that because we're an unknown brand, the website shouldn't look as if it's just some random website and you know that trust factor comes in uh, the information hierarchy has to be thought through uh, we had one click checkout from day one extremely important for uh, founders to know all of these things simply because of the fact that the uh, less the friction in the payment cycle uh, the better it is um, so uh, that's why we chose uh, d2c uh we started scaling that uh with performance marketing uh we started building our own ads uh, creatives are all in house so we wanted to make sure of the fact that we grow that uh, i love i love that you are the face of the brand by the way i think it is absolutely amazing to put yourself out there like that and you are such a natural and your hair and a speaks your story I think that was an amazing thing that you guys did. You know, it's... Uh, Everyone tries to do it. There are some things that the founder like, oh, I'm the founder, so let me come to this. It is not. You should not, like, it, it, sometimes it works. Most times it doesn't. Yeah. This is based in, like, the, the honest truth of the brand. Like, I think I'm very earnest when I talk about it because it is truly my pain point. And, but by the way, it wasn't, like, a, a very major strategic decision. We always thought we'll, we'll put the founder in the storytelling, but the truth is we needed to drive traffic to the website, yeah. right? Amazon gets its own traffic, yeah. but we wanted to focus on D2C, like as a logo. Yeah. So we had to start doing a little bit of ads. Uh, it's very slow to grow your, you know, organic reach on social media. And I was the easiest available person. So it's <laughs> like, Nikita, hey, you here. So let's make creative. Let's see how it goes. And the response was so good that right. we were like, you know, we should then make this very central because it's resonating with people. Yeah, some, people are, some people are not good on camera. It's just the truth of it is, a lot of founders are trying to do personal branding. You know, I think you can do it like, for example, podcasts are great. But yeah. in a beauty context, it really is a tricky... Like Shashank does a good job with the whole truth for his So good. Right? He does a yeah, very good job. So fit good. guy. He knows the science of it. He does a good job. He's also a very good communicator, articulate. Yeah. But most people are... Most people and again, that trust comes in very naturally with him talking on screen, right? Like in that ad, you trust knowing uh, he's making sense. So you uh, buy it on that basis. But uh, then we, uh, over, uh, in about Jan end, we opened up Amazon. Uh, we and a lot of brands, by the way, wanted, wanted to do Amazon first and then D2C. You yeah. guys went the other way, right? Uh, just because of customer data. Customer data and the quality of the website that we had built, we had very high confidence on the fact that these metrics would make sense. So, for example, even with our one-click checkout, um, and I'm surprised by this for ourselves as well most of the times, our... Uh, COD is 35% and our prepaid orders are 65%. But the reverse is the order for a lot of brands that I know of. Uh, we don't incentivize or disincentivize you to choose uh, prepaid or cash on delivery. Uh, the reason for that happening is the fact that the consumer is just so bought into the story before yeah. coming to the checkout. They're, they're okay to trust you with money up front Even first as time. well. Even first time. So That's very interesting. So that's been a cool insight on that front. How much is D2C an hour? So you're now doing 60 lakhs a month, of which 75% is D2C? Yes. 75% D2C. Wow, so you're now getting 1.5 lakhs a day on, on D2C. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. And the ROAS of? It's about 3.5 now. It used to be 4 plus. Um, and is Instagram? Yeah. Uh, the, main, yes. the main channel. Yes. yes. We have a little bit of traffic coming from Google also. We're going to start YouTube. but Search on ST Uh-huh. What's that? One of the brand search to protect karne wali hai, but search bhi hota hai. There are, we're obviously bidding more on long tail keywords. Shampoo pe to, matlab, we'll go bankrupt tomorrow. Um, <laughs> but again, even like for us, yeah. we thought Razor, that's it, and the big, but they're not big Google search words, they're big Amazon search words. Oh, oh, definitely. I think even for us and YouTube. So when okay. you're trying to figure out what to do in the beauty category, even for hair, yeah. um, you are often looking for a tutorial or a video. So the you'll either open Amazon or YouTube. 
But there is also enough on Google on Google Shopping that we activated that first because I think we need to understand the nuances of YouTube a little bit. You can't do exactly what you do on Meta, yeah. uh, and to a smaller team, right? And I do, we all do all creative in house, uh, so we wanted to go step by step. So we figured let's start here. You can click through to our profile. We had you know many months of content. Your brand store and all on Amazon. Before we started, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, you know one thing, Amazon yeah. has seventy one thousand. I don't know what the current is. Seventy one thousand person with their brand store. That's mm. insane. So when we started, yeah. that number was four to five thousand. Crazy. Okay, so now Crazy. they have taken that unlimited inventory promise to a very new level. The unfortunate part is there will always be someone who is seventy first thousand this day. Yeah. Right, so that brand never gets discovered. So Amazon is a great place to list. Yeah. But discovery still is an onus on the brand. Amazon is not yeah. shopping for it as much as they used to. Also, I think, and this is something which I wanted to share with you guys, is equilibrium in markets are bad for entrants. Right. The moment there's an equilibrium shift, then that becomes great for new age companies. To give you an example, when 2013, 2014 is when Amazon, Flipkart started becoming really scared in India, like very mainstream, uh, and uh, if you went and searched for your phones on Amazon, the bids were like very low. And you didn't have to like build a lot. There was a yeah. classic Harman Kardon and you know, all of these guys were doing the regular yeah. bids. And for them, it was like 2% of their sales or 5% or whatever. Yeah. Suddenly, so Boat came in and then just kind of just powered their way through into great pricing, great product, yeah. bidding on keywords and started climbing the organic ranks very quickly. And that happened because a lot of customers were moving towards Amazon Flipkart. So equilibrium was disturbed. Yeah. A new entrant came in. But today that strategy will likely not work. Yeah. No, it's too it's too crowded now. And also the large companies are now spending a lot more, right? So yes. the Exactly. Now the equilibrium is kind of the pendulum from yeah. the other yeah. bit. Someone was telling they us They came late to the party, but they realized the party is here. <laughs> so they started yeah. spending a lot. So someone was telling us recently it's more expensive to uh, acquire for shampoo on Amazon than it is to run TVCs at a VNL level for that. <laughs> Can you imagine? Really? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think maybe they, he was only half joking, um, right? So it's 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 very hard, at least with generic keywords and things like that. But if you if you start with a niche, maybe you can. But that thinking has kind of turned on its head a little bit. That um, it it isn't as easy now or as inexpensive now to acquire very quickly on Amazon. And like Anmol said, you definitely are not in touch with the customer. So if that is important for you to be doing early on, get to product market fit, we do actually call most of them. So, and, uh, but my view is, look, like if you have a customer like Malvika who's bought off your D2C website, she's bought off it four or five times, and tomorrow she's on an Amazon page and she's like, oh, she's going from Oxygen, let me just add it. The fact that your guys are there, yeah, yeah. allows. So you don't need to be in touch with her. Yeah. Just yeah. for that transaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazon the fulfillment engine, yeah. the product yeah. is there. It's it, only early days. First three months we wanted to, or four months, we wanted to hyper-focus on D2C, and then we've already we'd opened up Amazon because that's the easiest one to do. It's very democratic. In conversations with the others, because we knew after that we'll want to also build on on marketplace. Nike. That's like a very kind of initial product market fit measurement sort yeah. of decision. And so Nike and, and, and Qcom. Yeah, you know, and I think ones. I think what the reason why we went with Amazon was uh, the fact that we realized that shampoo is also a category where you want it quickly, yeah. right? So uh, Qcom would be brilliant ideal. and ideal for that. Because my shampoo is done, so I will order it in 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah, but. Amazon was the only other platform that gave us a one-day delivery option, yeah. right? And uh, because initial days, AK warehouse hai, Delhi mein warehouse hai, Kerala pochte pochte saat din lag rahe hai, Bangalore pochte pochte paanch din lag rahe So to solve for that is why we opened up Amazon in the first place. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, mm -hmm. we would have had the crowd not been around Blinkit and everybody <laughs> wanting to get in, uh, we would have gone there first. Yeah. But that's ideal. But I think what the realization is and what a lot of brands miss out on is the consumer really wants speed of delivery now and the base has changed. Uh, that's not acceptable anymore. So that's the, but the learning has been the fact that we saw a transition going from D to C to a lot of people asking, how can I get it in one day? Okay, I'll order it on Amazon. Right, and that yeah. that option. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we wanted to be present there. Right? We we weren't investing as much in growing that channel in in these first few months. Now now we started to, but we needed to be present there because just they have more efficient logistics, right? And if people well, wanted, so, see, I think people businesses that solve their problems the best, which are core to them, you let them do it. You guys solve the problem for hair. Blinkit solves the problem for ten minutes. Your D two C should not be solving the problem for ten minutes anyway. You should just give it to Blinkit and say, yeah. Customer, customer, yeah. Yeah. Right. 
No, that's that's that. I think the third important bit for uh, QCOM to really work, uh, and we're realizing this now in the last couple of months, is to really know what your hotspots across the country are, yeah. right? Because if you're going to take shelf space in dark stores, you need, really need to know ke kahan se pick up hoga aur kitni jaldi pahunchega, and those are the ones that you currently focus on. So experimentation becomes a lot better once you have your own data from D2C as well. And so important. So again, for the viewers, just think about the way they've thought about this. Right? They've said, need to see to tell the story and stay close to the consumer. We have put in the effort to make a great product, stay close to the consumer, get the consumer data, talk to them, iterate as much as possible, as upfront as possible. Then go to the place which has the maximum uh, spread of availability and a balance on one-day delivery. And now they're saying we'll go, go everywhere. And it's... It's amazing that you've actually kind of thought this through in, in, in certain amount of detail. A lot of brands are now thinking to quick commerce first. Yeah. Can build the brand on quick commerce, which might be good for like, let's say, a chips brand. Yeah. But for your brand, which requires communication, some amount of trial, sampling, yeah. it's good for there to be critical mass outside of e Even for us to, I think, be able to figure out how to start and scale, where to do pilots, we need that data, right? For us also to be confident that it's going to be able to justify the shelf space, right? It's it's limited. These are very small dark stores in very expensive parts of the city. So even they were like, you know, if you have a few months of data, we are happy to chat, but it needs to make sense for both of us, right? It's, um, and if if you go and it doesn't work, this they say themselves also, that we, without any discussion, we will close it for two It just, it doesn't make sense. It's too critical for us, uh, you know, to control the... Okay, okay, okay. The difference is short, so Amazon Flipkart, for example, operate from huge, like, Lacks of square feet of warehousing. Yeah. So for them, infinite inventory makes sense. But a blinked warehouse or a Instamart or a Zepto warehouse will probably have a dark store. Yeah. We'll have 2,000 products. So their approach is, many customer ko aaj chips see, to make a top 3 char chips brand see. Yeah. I don't want the 10th and 12th largest chip brand because it's a, it's an edge use case. Yeah. Uh, shampoo chahiye, to make a top 5 shampoo brands hai to, jo which will cover 90% of my consumer use case. Yeah. If they want something specific, I don't have the space because for them, they're optimizing for Revenue per cubic feet yeah. per unit type. Yeah. And if, unless you guys have, because everyone wants to get to quick commerce right now, yeah. any founder I talk to, quick commerce, <laughs> what, they, what they're not really sure of is what kind of velocity they can create. And what you don't want happening is getting in when you're not ready, yeah. not delivering to the account manager there, yeah. and then for them to like dismiss you saying, this didn't work, you were not part. Which has happened to us multiple times before we have to step back, work on our demand creation, like we said, hotspots, right? Start in one city, maybe where you're doing some excess marketing or where D2C, ka, like a lot more uh, sales is coming from, let's say, concentrated yeah. part of Delhi. Pe char store mein daalo pe exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. the other thing to uh, sort of uh, think about on that front is, uh, see, the thing is, how do you grow on a channel as yeah. well, right? Like, why did you grow so the question is, let's say if you have an ad spend on a Blinkit or a Zepto or an Instamart, what happens is if you're only available in one part of the city, so now they have concept of superstores that are available, which don't do 10 minute delivery, which do 30 minute delivery, uh, which is all right by you as a new brand because I one day say 30 minute pay, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, first Plus, on now that what it solves for is the fact that when you run ads on any of these platforms, uh, you have to re you're reaching the entire city. Yeah. You're not reaching only Bandra or only uh, Indra Nagar. That's not so. You're gonna the ROI on that ad spend has to come out and you need to be able to justify that. That's the other thing that we realized and the reason why we didn't go with any other platform but went D2C first. Because we want to be really efficient with money and the ROI that we uh, get on spends. The other thing is commissions, right? Uh, I uh, We don't pay commissions on D2C, but Amazon will take a commission, but Amazon's giving you a convenience of a different sort, which is the customers and the uh, delivery time, right? Yeah. Quickcom will ask you for heavier commissions simply because of the fact that it's solving for a different problem, which you also need to get to. But at the same point in time, because of the kind of products that we're getting and the ingredients that we have and how high quality product. So how do you play with when your margin is not as high simply because you're using quality ingredients, but also don't want to get into the discounting game? See, the thing is, a discounting game is a very tricky uh, thing to handle. And we've seen a lot of use cases of people not being able to handle that well uh, because the pressures become too much, right? So 
a healthy mix of what D2C can achieve for you versus what Amazon can achieve for you versus what Nike and Quickcom can achieve for you is something that we'll also have to explore in the next six yeah, months. Yeah, at a PNL level, because like beyond the point, obviously, marketplaces where uh, the audience is right with high intent. Yeah. Uh, when they're scrolling Instagram, they may they may not be. Uh, also, people don't stock up on extra shampoo. Yeah. If it's not getting over, it's not probably the right time yeah. for them to buy it. So all of that is of course there, um, but. I think we we are very happy with the decision we took also because the unit economics of DTC D2C made sense for us because yeah, of the अगले दिन मिल जाते हैं yeah yeah the other issue is with with prepaid you get yeah. the customer you payment in a day with COD you might gain in like two weeks yeah. but it's in that ten to fifteen day yeah. max window so that that cycle is really good and like our uh, ROAS you know fortunately was pretty good otherwise if the unit economics of D2C are so shitty then you're like I might as well pay the commission but overall still maybe be in a better spot in terms of just looking at uh the pnl for the category or for the channel um so that i think was early decision now we're thinking about doing a lot of channel expansion going forward starting with nika and pilot some pilots with with qcom players also maybe in in one or two cities try this longer chain model of superstores yeah. uh, to begin with some of them are piloting a marketplace model um so you know we're happy to do that whatever works yeah. for a smaller brand like ours just to test it customers to get you yeah yeah customer yeah. has to get you whenever they want that that, that path from is so much that yeah. is clearly stated preference by the customer also ki bhai i i, I need it yeah i need it on the yeah kit. and i think uh, d2c will remain as a channel which will be uh, uh, pretty big for us simply because of the fact that we can justify storytelling a lot better than when we can't do that anywhere else and our brand is built uh, wins keeping storytelling in mind uh, but the idea is that on d2c uh how, when does the customer receive the product also is a critical question right so the good thing is the fact that uh ship rocket and all of these platforms have solved that for you to a large degree where i can open up now knowing that my bombay customer or a bangalore or a hyderabad i can open up at with six uh warehouses i can probably do one to two day delivery to most of my consumer base which is good enough uh, because it cannot be 5 to 6 days is just not acceptable uh, in today's day and age but that's the plan to open up we, those we warehouses you start that early even with amazon right so we're doing fba everyone obviously wants to be doing an fba because it's just better experience for the customer and we we shouldn't uh, even attempt to do it better than amazon can but even uh, advice from then we spoke to someone there and they were like you should start getting your gsts for every state on day 1 just do it just take the gst and keep it so that when you are getting a sense of demand and you start planning you can open up the fulfillment center wherever right aap apna additional place of business karwa ke wahan pe khol lo because it is a slightly long process so that's something that we started doing both for d2c and for all these other channels so that if we want to be able to let's say hold inventory in four different regional clusters um time and also cost delivery cost will get optimized wo abhi se sochna chalu karo this is not a ek saal baad sochenge thing anymore it is a month month yeah, priority no. and uh, we were uh, we were at uh, at a party with uh, and we met albinder and we were speaking uh, albinder gave us an insight which was mind blowing to me from a consumer insights perspective he does that all the time on the right? note <laughs> <laughs> yeah so he, he, what he was basically talking about was the fact that um, if you have a 100 gram uh, toothpaste and a 50 gram toothpaste but the flavor is very different and the price is the same for both what they're seeing is a lot more pick up of the 50 gram one which costs the same as the 100 gram one because what happened what and this is quick commerce has fundamentally changed things right and we don't realize it on a daily level like 10 minute mein mere paas aa jayega main try kar lunga agar nahi pasand aaya i will not buy it from next time onwards but my loop of closure is this fast 10 minutes right and keeping delivery in mind and then making decisions is a very different concept altogether what that does to us and when we were talking about the whole amazon 71000 brands uh, in beauty space is the fact that if a brand like us goes on to qcom and if we look good enough or if we can uh, seem credible uh, seem credible enough the consumer on qcom is willing to experiment yeah, i agree i completely as opposed to people i think qcom is like kirana ka dukaan on my phone i don't think so because i think qcom will still have a scrolling mechanism yeah. i think new brands the playstation experiment yeah like it's unthinkable that they could sell fico or playstation in like a few hours or whatever yeah, yeah. people will people will overspend people will discover more i think your brand credibility has good marketing in general around outside of the platform also yeah cool do a good job 
amazing. What's the, what's the, you know, the people like I heard a, a really cool podcast from this guy called Asim through Asim through who like runs SBFC, and it's like a thousand crore top line tour or a Binda business. Uh, but traffic, uh, and he said one thing about one thing about businesses that are built well is we get our quarters right and we get our decades right. You have to think decade and quarter both. So what is it for you guys? Like what do what do you guys think at the here and now level? Like want to go from sixty a month to a crore and take your friends to Korea and <laughs> your team to like Paris or whatever, or and what is the decade plan? Like how do you guys think about like twenty forty for Moxie? I think uh, I think I'm we we're, we're building a younger, edgier, cooler, cleaner L'Oreal. Uh, see, L'Oreal's been the biggest and a fantastic brand globally on a beauty, uh, and to do it for generations like that, right? Uh, I think the aim is to make sure of the fact that we build from India, uh, but then do it globally for the world. Also, I hear, I hear there is capital now to kind of get to allocate and to 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 get good team and yes. invest in the things that we want to do. So. Well done on that, by the way. I know, I know, I know the ink is yet to dry, but I don't know whether it's it's is winning yet. Uh, it's uh, getting inked next week. Next so week? Yeah, 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 end of oh. the month they want to complete the transaction. Small diligence because like such a young business. Yeah. We did raise angel money last year, right? In in April we did um, a largish round, five and a half crores. Most of that is still with us, whether in cash or as inventory. So we were not in a hurry to raise. We wanted to raise once we hit that one CR, um, you know, sort of mark, which we thought would come a little later. Um, but things have been, you know, going so well. All the metrics look good. The fundamentals are there. Uh, so we are raising. Product is great. Oh, yes. I think, I think the, the yeah. business is a reflection on the product. Yeah. I think you guys have gotten the product right. So I think your your quarter game will play out. Even you will get capital, in my view, to, to build this out the way you want. I think the challenge for you would be, would be, if markets start tightening up, or you, you they, they are shallower than you think, then how are you guys able to evolve into finding deeper markets? Yeah, yeah. I, either at a price level yeah. or at a product level. Yeah. yeah. Well, we we the the short term sort of number is to get like now from the 50, 60 lakh mark to go to the one CR mark, and to do that, you know, by by September, and then uh, Anmol has his as a as a absurd sales guy has his absurd. Which know, I don't want to put out in the world because I don't want to take anybody anywhere. <laughs> like, <laughs> like two x three x targets of you know what I had in mind. He was whiteboarding it just yesterday. I was like, oh my god, like that's a lot of zeros. Um, but we've been thinking about where we need to get. I think eighteen months out is where we've thought in terms of like exact numbers. What's that number? Um, by the end of next year, we want to be at about three and a half to four CR conservative. It has come down in the knowledge. Yeah, that is. Yeah. We that will happen next year in eighteen months. My numbers double. Yeah, that. Go for, we're gonna go for, probably in double every four to five months. Yeah, yeah. That, that is our conservative estimate. She and she's <laughs> the she's the conservative one. I'm the optimistic <laughs> one. We land somewhere in the middle. That's the, seeing, that's how we operate. Yeah. 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 My seeing, number eight crore. I said <laughs> four. And crore. I said eight point seven. I have a photo of this from yesterday. Eight point seven sounds like a hundred crore number. Yeah. 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 Eight point seven hundred crore, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So he's like, this is what we do. I was like. For capital, I'm thinking capital efficiency. You know, he's sales, I'm finance. Yeah. <laughs> so I have a, I have different ways of looking at the metrics. And he's like, you know, forget about all of this. And what he said, right? I think we'll have more launches. We have a lot in our R and D pipeline, even for next year. And just channels, simple stuff, just being present on. Uh, we're, we are only on D two C and Amazon, and even Amazon, we haven't invested to really scale it much, right? It's we are there. Um, so we exist if someone wants to find us. So it it should be um, hyper scale, hopefully, but. I'm afraid to say the number 8.7 out loud because it's just like... Say 9. <laughs> <laughs> Round it up. So my only advice to you would be, I think, new launch driven growth is good, but don't let it distract you from repeats. Yeah. So new launches always give growth, but existing product, like your shampoo condition, the core, Yeah. how much is that repeating is an important part of the growth and that should that's where the growth should be. Uh, second thing is, I think, just be careful about channel margins and overall margin profile of your business. At a product level, so if your shampoo is, for example, at a gross margin of 78, but your gel is at a gross margin of 65, for example. Yeah. Try to increase the gross margin because low GM product yeah. will pull down, the pull down your overall margin. Yeah. And our GMs are are on the lower side only because we our ingredients are super. I'll, I'll tell you I'll tell you an interesting story, uh, which is uh, literally two weeks back we were waiting for an ingredient to come from abroad. Uh, a bunch of our ingredients come from outside. 
सर वो ना पायरेट्स ने लूट लिया it's unpredictability is become too much and but i mean never we milta hai the ingredient but the grade we want we have to import it and uh, i'm not willing to compromise on that yeah. right so we're just figuring out by air and i think it, make it work same product same channel same products on d2c same product on, on amazon same i think this nail that you, i think you can go from 60 to 2 to 4 to 8.7 on just very limited expansion yeah. of mm-hmm. just by like focusing on channel growth उसी कस्टमर को वही प्रॉडक्ट देना है तो वो मल्टीपल चैनल से जाएगा और उन चैनल्स में मार्जिन को अच्छे से रखना है Anyways, guys, uh, we are reached the time for your call. Uh, yeah. But uh, thank you so much for being so generous with your time. Um, congratulations on hyperscaling. I think with your insights, I think for the viewers on how to think about a consumer, how to identify a latent need, how to build a product for that latent need, how to wrap it with a marketing layer that is so beautiful and effective, not just beautiful. Yeah. And then think about channel in a particular way to think about a capital allocation. This the majority you both have is 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 a learning for me and hopefully for everyone else who's thinking about starting a company. So I think from the barber shop team and from everyone who's watching, all the best. We're watching you, cheering you on. Hopefully, Moxie becomes the 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 L'Oreal from India and then and then some. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so Thank much. You.